Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Cyclical Investors Club YouTube channel. My name is Corey Kramer. Today, we're going to be analyzing VeriSign, ticker VRSN. Um, this one came in by request down in the comment section of one of my other videos. If you have a request you would like me to analyze on the channel, um, just drop it down in the comments and I will make a video. Um, if it's in the S&P 500, I'll definitely post the video on YouTube. Occasionally, I'll post a few others. Um, I'm not sure if VeriSign is, but it's a super big company and I already track it. So I'm just going to go ahead and post this one on, on YouTube. Um, as always, this is not individual investing advice. This is just how I analyze stocks. I'm going to be using fast graphs in this video. Um, I do have a 25% off link down in the description. And I also have links to um, Patreon, which is $5 a month, which is where I post the videos that I are not usually in the S&P 500. Um, and then there's also a link to the full Cyclical Investors Club service over on Seeking Alpha, um, where I have chat room. You can message me anytime. I have dozens of articles and explanations of the strategies. Um, and there's a lot of other members that kind of contribute there um, to find new ideas to invest in. And I have a couple strategies that I don't um, write about or uh, make videos publicly. So you consider that. Um, with that, let's get into VeriSign. So I didn't remember whether I actually tracked VeriSign or not, but I but I do. So I did update my numbers. Um, so just glancing at let's let's widen this up and look at the history here. So we have a long history of relatively steady earnings. They had kind of a decline before you know the Great Recession, but since then, I mean, earnings have kind of just been steadily on the rise. Um, it looks like they leveled off a little bit more recently. I'm going to use a time period. I think I used 2015 through, and then I just did now expen extended it to 2024. Um, let's see what fast graphs. Yeah, that's about right. Okay. So this one's, I think, pretty straightforward. Um, decent earnings growth. The, the valuation got way ahead of itself. Here, I mean, 40 valuation for PE. And so when that happens, stocks can go through kind of a comp multiple compression period where the PE, where earnings kind of slowly try to catch up to the PE ratio and the stock price just kind of stays the same. So the stock came down a tiny bit, but the PE was, you know, almost cut in half during this time. So that's one way to... Um, it's a good way to show why valuation does matter with, with stocks like this. If you pay too much for them, I mean, it's been, let's see, that was 2019. That was five years ago. In five years, you've gotten no returns while inflation has gone up 30% and the stock market's probably gone up like 100%. So, and you've got nothing. That's what happens when you pay too much for a stock. So you don't want to pay too much and having a valuation process and having a program like Fast Graphs to make it a little faster definitely helps. So in order to figure out whether now that it's at a 24 PE using fast grass blended earnings here, whether it's still too expensive or not, or how expensive it is, or whether it's a good deal, um, we need to take the earnings growth. Uh, there's basically just a handful of factors that I use. The earnings yield, um, which is the inverted PE, earnings over price. Um, the, the earnings growth, which I, I calculate, I make some adjustments for and calculate um, myself and then um, I make adjustments for debt as well a little bit and stock buybacks so but the stock buybacks goes into the earnings growth so um, it doesn't look like there is too much difference between now the long-term debt to capital is super duper crazy high but usually what I look at is the market cap compared to the total enterprise value those are about the same so I'll probably just made like a small adjustment for that so that's not really a big deal or at least it doesn't jump out at me immediately it's like a problem um, this big earnings growth year, we can already see is expected to temper. So they might've pulled forward some earnings, um, last year. And we'll just take, we'll just get a good baseline kind of earnings estimate. We have one year that where earnings went nowhere. We have this year where it's expected to decline. So that will pull them down. Um, I didn't recheck the stock buybacks, but I'll have that in my earnings growth rate as well. Let's shrink this down here. Sometimes I forget that fast graphs counts those extra 
future years when they do the earnings growth. Um, okay, so they have about 11% earnings growth um, during this time frame. Let's see what I have. I have about 10. So very close. That could just be the couple of down years. It could be a little bit of stock buybacks that I controlled for. Um, so let's go through the valuation process. There really aren't too many adjustments. Yeah, so the, the normal stock price is 191. I'm treating it as 197 for that tiny amount of extra debt. So, I mean, there's not a whole lot of adjustment. Like none of this is going to make like a huge difference in the valuation. So we have about a 4%, 3.98% earnings yield right now. That includes the debt adjustment. So that's about a 25 PE. What was the fast graph? 24.3, so almost the same really. Um, okay, so the way I like to think about this is if I bought this whole business for $100, the business would earn $3.98 plus about as like 9.96% earnings growth. So we'll call it like 10% earnings growth. Um, and the earnings growth is the earnings here that grow 10%, not the earnings in the addition of the $100 that you theoretically are paying for them. Um, even though when I show you this here, it's going to show the $100. So I pull forward the first year's growth. So if you start with 100, um, you end that year with 104.37, and then the $4.37 grows at 10% approximately. In the next year, you will have collected, you don't get another $9 that year. That would be like double, right? Um, you get the four bucks plus another 4.37 plus 10%, whatever that is, and then you have 109. So you do this for like 10 years. And I see how much I would collect over the course of 10 years, which on $100, you would add an additional 70 bucks, basically. So then you just run a simple Kager calculation to see what the 10-year Kager, well, using these assumptions, likely will be. And it's about 5.42%. So it's about the same as what short-term treasuries yield. Um, now, there's no guarantee short-term treasuries will continue to earn 5%. And if there's more inflation, VeriSign would probably be able to pass that cost on to customers. So this is kind of an inflation protected 5.4%. And it's about the same as the S&P 500 on average. Um, I track about half the no regular earning, like non-cyclical, has enough data, not or eat, like about half the S&P 500 I can run this analysis on. And that's about, if you averaged it all out, what they're trading at as well. So this looks to be trading about the same as the wider market in terms of valuation. So then the question an investor needs to ask is, if you're just comparing it to the S&P 500, you know, you're taking on more risk by just buying an individual stock. Um, and then you can also look at other stocks that have the same similar valuation and just think about the company and say, look, is this the, would I rather have my money in this company that maybe has this risk or VeriSign, which has this other risk? Um, when the valuations are similar like that, then it's really just kind of a question of, you know, which one of these companies would I rather own, you know, is the highest quality? Do I, can I um, predict a little bit better, maybe has a better mode or something like that. So you can, you can kind of do that more when you have something that's basically trading about the same as the market in terms of valuation. So that's how I would think about it. Um, it's, you know, there's a lot of stocks like this. Once you do the, once you control for a few things and you, the most quality stocks, big caps, the markets getting seem that aren't cyclical and that aren't, AI related or whatever are right in this five and a half fish percent expected Kager over 10 years. So usually it moves up to like portfolio level considerations about whether you want to own it. Um, do you have a bunch of other similar companies already? Maybe a geographical location makes a difference. Um, maybe you want something that pays a dividend compared to something that doesn't. Um, so it's really kind of gets down to those sort of sort of calculations. So it looks about the same as market. Now, to me, like fair value is about six and a half. So this is expensive, but it's not so expensive that it's a clear sell. Um, this would just be like a, an expensive hold, basically, because there's not I mean, you have to be very selective about finding another stock of similar quality that's cheaper. Right. Um, they're out there. 
but maybe they are in a different type of industry and there's kind of a different risk and you know so those are the type of things you kind of get into there's not really a clear call i don't think one way or another with verisign all right hopefully you found that useful if you did hit the subscribe button if you have a request of your own drop it in the comment section i'll get it on my whiteboard behind me and eventually i'll make a video and i'll see everybody later bye